Welcome. Good morning, everybody. We appreciate you for joining us for all access here today on this lovely Friday. We've had so many conversations in the past, and you know that here at Benzinga, we love bringing executives from private companies and especially publicly traded companies to get your questions answered, to have the conversations that you're not able to have on other networks. So with that being said, as you can tell, we have another great conversation happening with Sylvia Wolf, who is the president and CEO of Aqua Bounty Technologies, ticker AQB. So let's have that conversation now. Hey, Sylvia, how are you? I'm well, thanks for having me. Appreciate you joining us. Uh, it's been fascinating learning about Aqua Bounty. I mean, it's it's been truly great to see what y'all have done, what you're doing now. So thank you so much for joining us to have this conversation. But I know I've done some research, but for the folks at home that may not have done theirs, Explain it to me like I'm five. What is it that Aqua Bounty does? Aqua Bounty is an aquaculture business that focuses on land-based recirculating aquaculture systems to raise seafood. In addition, we're a biotechnology company, and we are the first marketer of a genetically engineered salmon that's been designed to thrive in a land-based farm. So it's the future of seafood production. Now, what, so that's really interesting because I know sometimes people don't like things modified this, that, the other, right? And again, if you feel like I'm, you know, misrepresenting anything, please let me know. Um, but have you gotten any like pushback or have people loved what y'all are doing? Because that sounds really interesting to me. There's always pushback when you talk about GMOs or genetic engineering. And it stems from the fact that people just don't understand the benefits. And I don't think that some of the companies that compete in the space have explained to consumers what they've done, why they did it, and why it's good for the consumers. So I think, yes, we definitely have some pushback, but it's a very small vocal minority. What we found is we get a 70% purchase intent um, when we ran qualitative and quantitative research because consumers understand we have to think about our food systems differently, and we have to think about those food systems in light of what's going on with our climate. Yeah. So three. So it's interesting you mentioned that, right? Because the three biggest things that I've found that you guys repeatedly talk about is making sure that your fish are safe, fresh, and sustainable. How are you able to do this? Our approach is, as I said, land-based recirculating aquaculture system farms. And what that, if you think about it, it's a big land-based tank farm. The benefit of that is we're taking pressure off the ocean, right? The fish are in a biosecure environment, so they're not exposed to weather challenge, extreme weather, ocean acidification, and more importantly, disease. So they're antibiotic free. The second benefit of that is we're close to consumption. Most of the salmon that we consume in the United States is actually flown in um, because it's produced in cold off the shores of um, countries where there's cold water. But we can produce close to consumption. And so you're getting a fresher product with a smaller carbon footprint. Um, and we think that that is critically important to add to the food supply as we move forward. I definitely agree with that because yeah, you don't want like in the biggest arguments and it's fresh, like close to being consumed. You definitely want it closer. Uh, that way it's fresher, different things like that. Now, what about the carbon footprint though? Because is, does it have any negative impact doing it here closer to home or no? Well, the carbon footprint, when you think about salmon production, most, well, pretty much all salmon are produced in net pens off the coast of Chile, Scotland, um, and Norway. So they're air freighted. So that's not a really good carbon footprint. In addition, you know, you have to ship those or you have to use boats to bring that production to land for processing. So we have a different and more advantaged carbon footprint. And one of the things we are uh, have been focused on over the last year is we're a very data-driven, scientifically oriented company, as you would expect with our history in biotech. So we started measuring all the contributors to our greenhouse gas emissions. And we've been tracking that for over a year. The opportunity is, number one, we know we have a, um, a more advantaged carbon footprint to date versus net pen con contributors. But more importantly, we know exactly what we're producing so we can begin to narrow that and continue to improve it. So all of this, I would assume, costs a lot of money, right? Especially being in the biofield as well. 
Let's talk financials. What's the financial health of your company looking like? Because I'm sure doing this is not cheap. It's not. What I'd say is um, we operate two farms, one in Indiana, which is a 1,200 metric ton farm. And we operate our broodstock facility on Prince Edward Island. But really the exciting thing is we are building a large scale, what we call 10,000 metric tons of production in Northwest Ohio. It's a highly uh, agriculturally oriented part of the country, um, but it's an expensive farm to build. So our capital costs are definitely different um, than our net pen contributors. But, but when we look at costs to the consumer on a delivered basis, we are as competitive as any uh, product coming out of a net pen. Their costs continue to increase simply because of some of the challenges that we just discussed. And so we believe that we will continue to improve our cost structure, but it's, a, it's an expensive capital investment. And well, I mean, it's, it's expensive, but y'all are making it work as well, because something that stood out to me while reviewing your Q3 financials was that you saw a 44% increase in revenue uh, year over year. How are you able to do this? And more importantly, though, is it sustainable moving forward that our viewers at home can possibly expect as well? So as I said, we operate a um, 1,200 metric ton facility in Indiana, and all of the output of that farm has been sold. So, you know, it takes us about 18, 19 months to grow a salmon to harvest weight. And we have a number of cohorts in different life stages in that facility. So as they reach those harvest weights, we're, continu we're in continuous production now, which is why we're able to continue to increase our revenue. And it's helping us as we start to think about cost reduction and cost of production. It's not an advantaged facility. We bought it out of bankruptcy. It wasn't designed for salmon. It's about six generations behind in terms of technology. But what it allows us to do is gain experience in managing our salmon production. You know, taking care of the fish is paramount. And so we're continuing to improve our operational performance as we harvest, you know, grow and harvest fish. And so we expect that continued delivery of revenue to continue to increase quarter over quarter. You talk, we talked about the past, we talked about the financials and you, you mentioned the, uh, the, what you guys do in the future. So let's talk about the water permit that I believe you guys were just granted that allows you to go ahead and withdraw, I believe approximately 5 million gallons per day from your Ohio farm. That's a lot of water. Um, I try to drink a gallon a day myself. So, you know, that's a lot of water, but how are you like, what's this for? What does this do to benefit the future? So when you think about the number of tanks that will be um, part of the Ohio farm, we require, you know, 20 million gallons plus to fill those tanks uh, and keep those fish thriving. But what it requires is we're, we've got to recirculate that water uh, because at some point we're, we will be building a water wastewater treatment facility that will we'll have to take that water out and then clean it and then discharge it. And that's the, the punishment water that we're talking about on a daily basis. We have achieved or we have been granted the water permit by the state of Ohio. Um, they did a thorough analysis. There was public comment period, et cetera. Um, we take water consumption very seriously. And so we want to make sure that, number one, what we take out of the ground, whatever's discharged is as good or better than what we pulled out of the ground. And two, we constantly look at new technologies to reduce that water consumption. So as I said, we call it a recirculating aquaculture system. And so that's really the discharge of the water that needs to be processed and can't be recycled anymore to keep the fish healthy and safe. It has been so fun talking to you so far, and I'm going to extend this a little bit longer if I can. What are some challenges that you typically face as you're trying to grow the company? Is it, is it, is it laws? Is it just science? Is it the bio side of things? What, what's kind of the speed bumps you face? The first is making sure that we are operating with excellence because as I said, safety of our people, safety of our fish, that's the number one priority. I love it. Um, and, and so, you know, it's how do we continue to improve our operations? Um, and we are a lean continuous improvement oriented company. So we've implemented that practice across every function in the company. Um, 
I, you know, everybody talks about being a purpose-driven um, organization. We really are. Our teams really believe that they are going to be feeding the world by transforming aquaculture using technology. And that leverages both aspects of what we do, fish farming and biotechnology that allows us to think about breeding, genetics, health, nutrition. Um, and so we're employing that into the farms, but it's a long cycle um, to grow a salmon. The advantage of our genetic engineering is we can produce more salmon faster. So you get more of a healthy protein being sent to consumers and our salmon are highly efficient in terms of the food that they consume that turns into biomass. So think about we produce more of a healthy protein using less resources. Um, it, it's the, I mean, it's exactly what we need today when we think about the challenges that we have with food security and, you know, what, how we need to take care of our planet. Well, look, new year, new me. I know I'm trying to slim some weight down, so I might have to look into this myself. No question about it. I've got one more and then I promise I'll turn it over to you. Uh, let's look into the future in terms of what the aquaculture landscape will look like in 10 years and how you're hoping aqua bounty will play a role in that. I like to think of our business from three perspectives. The first is the farms that we operate today. So how do we take Indiana with all its challenges and continue to make sure that we are operating with excellence? Because it really stresses the teams and it really helps us get better. The second is building out Ohio, right? That is the, that is the transformational event for this company because we will be producing profit and we will be cash flow break even. So that is a transformational event. That footprint, that design, our expectation is to continue to expand into other geographies, both in North America and outside of North America. And I think that's going to be important. And then lastly, when we think about our core competencies, operating land-based recirculating aquaculture systems, there are a number of species that we believe are going to be challenged um, you know, in terms of protecting wild uh, populations, as well as some of the challenges that you get from farming or aquaculture. And so we believe that that practice can be applied to other species. And the first one that we're investigating is shrimp. And so we think, you know, we don't think of ourselves as a salmon farmer. We think of ourselves as an aquaculture company that knows how to build land, build and operate land-based farms, but also the scientific capability that looks at health, nutrition, breeding, genetics, um, so that we can, in fact, operate with excellence and we're always out in front of the curve. And so I think we've got a really bright future. Yeah, I like what I'm hearing. And look, I know Mr. Crab is calling you from down under, so I'll kind of turn it over the floor to you. And we've talked about financials. We've talked about uh, the, you know, the grant that you got in Ohio. But was there anything that you were hoping to discuss that I didn't bring up for our viewers at home? I think the most important thing is we need all forms of food production. And, you know, we want us, we want a really rigorous regulatory environment because we want safe product. But I think we also want to make sure that we are in fact leveraging technology to solve what I consider to be, here's two choices you don't want, global starvation, planet destruction. Technologies like ours and the way that we produce salmon and, and other species in the future are going to help to make sure that we can feed that growing population in a way that is environmentally responsible and sustainable. And so that's what we're all about. Um, and we use science to do that. And so again, I'm really excited about the future of the company. As am I. And, you know, like I mentioned earlier, I was fascinated to learn about this. You know, in my daily life, this isn't something that I think about. So to get a chance to learn about your company, what y'all are doing was an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much again, Sylvia Wolf, president and CEO of Aqua Bounty, ticker AQB. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Take care. Yeah.